Hi, my name is Shiko Fili and welcome back to Devs on Devs in Production. Now in our last video, we talked about how to speed up our local development using Scaffold. Now if you haven't seen that video, please click on the link below to learn more about it. So today we'll be focusing on how to use Scaffold effectively to debug services with VS Code in our local environment. And finally, I'll show you how to automate everything we've learned using Cloud Code. Let's jump right in. Let's quickly set up uh, in this tutorial how to get your VS Code configured to work with your Scaffold configuration. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our Scaffold config works correctly and that's just by running scaffold dev now remember to always check to make sure you're running scaffold dev on the context in which you want it to run scaffold in this tutorial is running in my local kubernetes context uh, as you can see i'm using my local docker for mac and that's why i'm able to build now um i'm just gonna check here make sure that backend is up Oh, sorry, I think that's 8080. Oh. Uh, yeah, very important detail. I forgot to add the port forward. Okay, you need to forward the ports before they work properly. And... All right. In doing port forward mode, all you have to do is wait till it launches and you'll be able to see the ports in which we're forwarded. So uh, the back end is on 8080, I think, and the front end is on 4503. The reason why it's on 4503 is because in our service configuration folder, we actually use port 80. And obviously, we can't use 80 in local hosts. I could always switch that, but it works. So um, if I go to port 4503 you see the front end and as usual i think everything works okay good now i'm going to kill this now because what we want to do now is configure vs code what we want to do is configure vs code to work with scaffold and how we can get that working is by basically telling VS Code where it can find the Node.js application. But before we configure that, the first thing we need to do is run scaffold in debug mode. Okay, so we would run scaffold debug instead of dev. And what scaffold will do is that it will install the debugging ports to the scaffold um, hook environment. Now, remember, in our source files, we already have deployed our Node.js application using the inspect command. So we have our internal Node.js ports exposed on 92, uh, 9,229 for both of the applications. Just to be sure, there we go. Uh, please remember to only run this in development environment. When you want to go to production, use the Node.js uh, app to you know, avoid any uh, external access or vulnerabilities or what have you. Anyway, now that being said, um, the way Kubernetes works is that it will map the internal port to a service and then map that service to your local uh, environment. But with Scaffold, what Scaffold will do is without needing to configure um, in your YAML uh, files, without needing to configure an extra debug port here or in your deployment, you wouldn't need to, you know, specify the debug. I mean, you could do it manually, but by app appending the debug CLI option to Scaffold, Scaffold will automatically insert all of that into the service or into the deployment and then expose those ports for you. So if we look up in our tree, we already have the apps running in debug mode as we did previously, but we couldn't access them. But now that we're using debug and we have all the ports forwarded, you can see that the back end is being forwarded to from 9229 in remote to our local host on 9229. And because the ports collide, Scaffold did the smart thing and then is using 9230 for the front end. So with that in mind, um, we can then go and configure our debug uh, tool, which is VS Code. So what we're gonna do is create a launch file. 
um, it's going to be docker debug in container and we will add two configurations so the first configuration we will add is the docker attached to node now it will give us a basic configuration which we should modify so the first thing i'm going to do is modify and add the backend configuration okay and then um this is the important bit you need to tell uh, vs code where the remote files exist right where the files exist in your docker container in our case for both applications if you check the docker file all the files exist in the work directory uh, www so if you notice this is where we copy everything into www so www is the root folder where all our application source exists in the container but you also need to tell it where the port is by default the port is 9229 but i'm specifying it here for emphasis so uh, for the back end as we can see scaffold tells us that the back end is running uh, on 9229 but then finally you need to tell um, scaff um, VS code where your local root is okay and I believe the syntax here is um, I think that it's workspace it should be workspace folder I think that's it and then so workspace folder refers to this folder uh, you need to specify the path to where the source files are. In my case, it's source forward slash backend. So essentially what you've told VS Code is you've said, hey, in my workspace folder, the source files are here in the backend and the remote folder is in www. And I'm just going to duplicate that configuration for the front end and make some minor changes. So this, I'll change that to front end. That's what we'll call it. And I'll change this to port 30. And then this is front end. All right. And now that we have a configuration that's good, what we'll do is just click on run. And then, I mean, there are two ways to run it. You can either start up here or you can always attach the node here. So you can just say, you know, attach to the backend node and um, let me do the other one. You can just attach to the front end node. So once you have both nodes running, you should see back end and front end both running. You can always reboot. You can disconnect each of them, but you also have them here and you can always switch between both of the running um, attached services. Also, the beautiful thing is the loaded scripts. Um, this is the actual script running inside the container. But remember, we already linked our local files to the running container. So if, for example, we wanted to set a breakpoint here, I could use this local file. I'm going to set a breakpoint here, right? Um, this is sim linked already. Uh, if, if, if I could use that word, I'm going to switch to debug view again. Um, so this is swim sim link and it would sim link that same file in here even though this is the one internal inside the container but once i set the breakpoint in here um it the breakpoint should be set and the red dot there tells me that it's actually set and it's context aware the reason why i talked about the loaded scripts is it should in case you have um you know uh, an environment or a setup where you don't have access to the local files but you know, you don't have access to the actual, you know, actual files and you can't make changes, but you just want to debug, you can actually use the loaded script. So you don't literally need the repository with the local files or with the raw files. All you need is access to the containers and you can load the scripts as long as you know where they are and you can set breakpoints and so on and so forth. You can actually do that for a running app uh, if, if it were. So now that we have everything set up, I'm going to set a quick breakpoint here and we're going to visit that breakpoint. Okay, so you see the application is stuck in state and we have everything that we need to see. We have everything in the variables, whatever it is we want to access, and we can step over to continue and everything uh, works. Okay, um, if I sent query parameters here, hello world. Okay, set this to run again. Again, my 
you know, stock trace breakpoint. My big breakpoint is hit again, and I can inspect the query methods params. There we go. As you can see, hello world is received. And once I have all the information that I need, I can step over, step into, step out, or continue to run. Um, same thing goes with the front end repository. And that's pretty much how you get everything up and running with Scaffold and VS Code. All right, so what is Cloud Code? So Cloud Code is a tool that helps you write, run, and debug cloud native applications quickly and easily. It's got extensions for VS Code, IntelliJ, Goland, WebStorm, and PyCharm, well, and a lot more. And at its core, it is powered by Scaffold, so it enables you to quickly iterate, debug, and run code in Kubernetes and Cloud Run. So let's quickly look at setting up and debugging a new project with Cloud Code. Okay, so now we're going to configure using Cloud Code. Essentially, Cloud Code is a um, plugin that was developed by Google's team for VS Code to allow us to configure everything that we've just done so far in one click in an automated form or manner. It, it hooks everything up, runs scaffold debug, port forwards, and then hooks and same links all the different microservices into um, our debuggers. So let's give it a go. Now, um, notice I don't have, I've killed the application, so we don't have anything running. Quickly uh, rename this old configuration as our backup configuration. And let's set up a new configuration, right? So we'll switch into the debugger, create a new configuration launch file. Now remember, Cloud Code doesn't come shipped with VS Code. You'd have to go to the extensions, um, well, search for Cloud Code and install it. I already have it installed. Once you have Cloud Code installed, you can then create a configuration file. This option will be enabled click on cloud, cloud, uh, cloud code, there are two ways to run. You can attach to a pre-existing running container pod or Kubernetes pod. So that's for those of us who, or you know, those of you who have applications running in production or in staging, or you know, they're already live in the wild, or you can use run debug Kubernetes app for the current context, which we are working with uh, in local development. And that's what we want to do. Now, it gives us a simple run configuration. Uh, its type is Kubernetes. Now, the difference here is, you will use VS Code to actually launch Scaffold. So you will tell VS Code or Cloud Code actually where your Scaffold configuration file lives and then tell it you want to watch, which is the same thing that Scaffold would do if you were running Scaffold Dev. You want to clean up after you kill it, which means, you know, uninstall the application and delete all the resources. That's with Scaffold Dev when you do a kill and a port forward you know, which is the same CLI option to forward all the ports internally that exist outside and hook them up to your local host. Now, this is a launch request, which is quite different from a an attach request. So uh, those are just the subtle differences. Okay, so let's just run the application. So you could just run and that's it. So what it will do is it will start the application up and then attach the debugger straight away right uh i'm just gonna give it a minute all right now the only difference here is unlike before we had to specify two different configuration files in our launch config um for the attach process to tell it which application to find where and what now in this case as you can see it already knows to debug using the right directories and the right folder. So it's asking to debug Node.js backend, confirm or enter the directory in the remote container where the program can be found. So I'll just skip, press enter, same thing for the front end, enter, and it will launch and watch both applications for us running just like we did, as you can see. So our application is back up. Let's go and set a uh, breakpoint. All right, so we have a breakpoint set. Scaffold is context as well, as you can see. And I'm sure you're wondering how does you know Scaffold and Cloud Code know where to 
you know how to map the local files to the remote files that's because in our scaffold configuration we already set the context so it knows how to do the linking automatically rather than we specifying it in vs code uh, i just thought to make that point there so uh what i'm going to do is change this to hello hello just to refresh and as you can see our breakpoint has been hit um um to view the debug information, to switch the debug tab, and where do we have query parameters? There we go. Hello, hello, and as as usual, you can continue, and that pretty much is it. As you can see, it took me less than what two minutes to set up Cloud Code for Node.js application, but I wanted to walk us through how to do everything manually so you'd understand how powerful Scaffold is. All right, so thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. You can also hit the notifications icon down below to be the first person to know when I've uploaded a new video. Speaking of, in our next video, I'll be talking about how to debug our live running applications in production in real time. See you then. Bye.